Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Living Theosophy. Once a month, we're lucky enough to have the one and only Miss Kathy Gann from Denver with us. Um, she's like our very own Aunt Eleanor. If you've been watching this series, which is Timeless Teachings for Kids, these are the ancient ageless wisdoms uh, for children, for the young. So parents and teachers and, and grandparents, uh, please, please pay attention to what we're doing here. This is something that I believe, and, and Kathy talks about this, this will change lives because Kathy has mentioned that once the children can get a hold of these teachings, put them into application. It paves the way for a more compassionate, um, self-responsible, self-transformation, uh, empathetic world for our future here on planet Earth. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the one and only Kathy Gann. Welcome, Kathy. Thanks so much. I'm so glad to be back with you, Anne. Tonight, we're going to be talking about dreams, and we're going to be using, continuing our series on this little book called Because, for the Children Who Ask Why. This was originally published in 1916 by the Theosophy Company, and if you're seeing this, uh, this episode in the series as your first one, I'm just going to briefly repeat the uh, premise of the book. The book features two children, Dorothy and Milton, who have been sent to live with their Aunt Eleanor because their mother has become very ill and their dad can't take care of them and his wife at the same time. So they go to live with his sister, their Aunt Eleanor, who is a wonderfully wise woman with all the patience in the world for all their questions. She's a very well-studied and wise theosophist. And the question and answer sessions that come out of uh, just the children asking her about life are priceless. Even though I don't endorse or agree with every single thing in the book, I think it is chock full of so much valuable material that it, it's well worth going through or getting a copy if you can uh, to go through with your own children. It's important to know that in chapter five of the book, the children's mom who'd been ill for quite a while did pass away. And when she passed away, their dad left the city. He came to live with them at Aunt Eleanor's house. And so the children are now being raised in a small town with Aunt Eleanor and with their father. So it's quite a lovely upbringing. So tonight, we're, as I said, we're talking about dreams. And Aunt Eleanor had at one time told the children that everybody dreams every single night, even if they don't remember their dreams. So one morning when Milton got up before school, he realized he couldn't remember his dreams. So he asked Aunt Eleanor about this again. Does everybody really dream every single night? And Aunt Eleanor said, everyone goes into the land of dreams every night on his way to deep sleep and comes back from there to waking through the land of dreams. But each one has his own dream, just as he has his own thoughts when wide awake during the day. And she said, no two people ever dream the same dream. And now for purposes of this discussion, I'm going to set aside the, the phenomena of shared dreams, because even though some people have shared dreams and they share maybe the same setting and the same activities, it would still not be the same dream because each would see it from their own perspective. So still it would be a unique dream. And then Aunt Eleanor said, but there are various kinds of dreams. And she reminded Milton about one time when he had eaten way too much food, way too late at night, and his body was having a hard time digesting the food while he tried to sleep. And she said, your body kept signaling your brain about its discomfort and the body and the brain's discomfort kept him from going into a state of deep sleep. And in fact, he had experienced nightmares that night, which is not a kind of dream that any of us want to have. So Aunt Eleanor told Milton and Dorothy, she said, you see, it's just as if the brain were a hallway leading from waking to deep sleep. On its walls, the perceiver, that's that thinker deep inside of us, that's our consciousness, that's who we really are, the perceiver has been hanging all kinds of pictures during the day, and when the body and the brain is tired and uncomfortable, the perceiver sees all those pictures kind of like in a tangle as he goes through the hallway on his way to deep sleep. But if the body is comfortable, then the perceiver just kind of glances at those pictures in their order as he passes through and forgets about them until he comes back through to waking again. But what he has seen in deep sleep, he connects when he's awake with the, those pictures in the hallway. Remember those pictures in the hallway, the brain is the hallway. Those pictures are our memories of things that have happened. So what he has seen in deep sleep, he connects when he's awake with those pictures so that when we wake up, we can't 
quite be sure exactly of what happened in that world on the other side of the hall. So then Milton turned to Dorothy and asked if she'd had any dreams that night. And she was a little funny about it. She said, yes, but Aunt Eleanor, I'd rather not tell the dream right now, if that's all right. And Aunt Eleanor said, certainly, dear, don't tell them unless you care to. She said, sometimes people lose the sense of the rarest dreams by repeating them idly or too soon. And then it was time for the kids to go to school. So they went off to school for the day. And later that night, as everybody was sitting quietly around the fire, there was Milton, Dorothy, their father, Richard, and Aunt Eleanor. Dorothy finally spoke up and she said, Aunt Eleanor, I think I'd like to have you know about my dream now. It was a dream about my mother. We seemed to be walking in the twilight together through a lovely garden. It was too dark to see mother clearly, but the flowers seemed to be shining like stars. Mm. I could smell the violets and the lilies were so bright in their white and gold. I just held my breath to look at them. All the while my hand was in mother's, but we were not speaking till at last we came to a dark wall and mother put her arms around me saying, now run along little daughter. That was all of the dream, but when I woke up, it seemed as if mother were standing there right beside my bed. I lay there very still and quiet and just felt her there until I finally just had to look and see, and then I knew that she was gone. Everybody in the room was quiet for a few moments, and then Aunt Eleanor said, that was a real dream, dear. Your feeling when you woke was the memory of what happened while you were away in that far land of deep sleep. You surely were with your mother there. On coming back through the hallway of the brain, you saw pictures of radiant beauty because what took place in reality called up in your brain the most beautiful pictures ever hung there. Mm. Now, sometime before that, the children had asked Aunt Eleanor to tell them all about their past lives. They were intensely curious to know who they had been and when they had lived, and she had told them at the time she wasn't able to do that. But now, while they were on the topic of dreams, she told them, it is quite possible that as the years go on, you may catch glimpses of past lives in your dreams. You may even know the names that you were called when living in those other bodies. The record of them all is in that land of deep sleep. And Dorothy asked, she said, but Auntie, how could we tell if it was just a dream, just a regular dream, or you know, how could we know if it was a dream of a past life, or maybe it's just a mixing up of the pictures in the hallway from this life? And then Milton chimed in. He said, yes, Andy, or maybe it's something we remembered out of a book or something that someone else had told us. And Aunt Eleanor nodded and she said, yes, in many cases, that would be the fact. She said, it certainly would be wise to examine the dream for any apparent causes first. And if you find one, then just let it go at that. But if for all your thinking and searching and trying to remember, if you can find no cause at all, then quite possibly it is a memory of other lives. She said, I've known of people dreaming scenes they had never read about, never heard of, had never even imagined of uh, costumes and clothing that people were wearing and people that seemed strange. And yet in the dream, they had no sense of strangeness at all. They were a part of the scene themselves. They were wearing the same kind of clothes as everybody else. She said their sense of I am I, or I am me, that sense of me felt like it belonged there. Just like if you remember what you did yesterday, that was me. We just, we just have a sense within us that that was me that did what I did yesterday. And it can be the same with dreams or past life memories. It's that sense of I am, I am me, or I am I, which that thinker or perceiver inside us that's the real us. And Aunt Eleanor said, it seems quite likely, doesn't it, that the I can make a connection with its other lives in deep sleep. Hmm. She said, anyway, such is the fact which you can someday prove for yourselves. And then it was almost bedtime, but Dorothy had one more question. She said, Auntie, some of the girls at school have dream books that they say tell the meaning of dreams. Do they? And Aunt Eleanor shook her head and she said, no, dear, I'm sure they don't. Every dreamer dreams differently, and only the dreamer can get the meaning of what he dreams. Mm. And then Aunt Eleanor said, well, there are other kinds of dreams besides those that we have spoken of. There is very much more known about all kinds of, all kinds of dreams other than what we have said. But after all, the most important thing is to keep our thoughts unselfish, true, and clean during our daytimes. And then our voyages into the land of deep sleep are bound to be fair ones that bring us back to waking time refreshed and eager for our daily task. So 
sweet dreams to you girls and boys. And then she led Dorothy and Melton upstairs to bed. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love that she is not only so wise, but brave and, and so uh, all encompassing to guide these children on their way to talk about past lives within dreams, because it does talk about in the teachings how we access our higher selves as we cross over into the dream world. Uh, and some people dismiss that, but I think there's something to dreams. As a matter of fact, medical science doesn't even know what happens when we sleep for sure. So what are your thoughts really quick before I let you go on past lives in dreams? I've had impressions. Yeah, I've had impressions okay. and um, impressions from time to time. And my experience has been that when I reach the age in this life, when something might have happened in a past life, that's when I'm most likely to get impressions about what happened before. That's really so, interesting, really. Yeah, and I, I don't know what the ex explanation is for that. But, uh, you know, I'll say one other thing about Aunt Eleanor saying the dream books didn't have any value. I, yes. I think I... I think you have to look at the book uh, because I have a dream book that I has a great deal of value and then one that is more rigid in its interpretations. And I find that the one that is very, very flexible in its interpretations mm. is the, the one that I turn to all the time, because as she said, it is, it is it's what it means to us that counts. Mm -hmm. But I find that the dream book can, oh, maybe, maybe head me in the right direction. Yes. Yes. It and can then I can Yeah. Yeah, and then I can apply what is said in the book and, and kind of extrapolate. So I do find, I do have one dream book that I find to be helpful. It didn't exist in 1916 when, when Anne Eleanor was saying this, so I don't know what the dream books were like at that time. I think if we write down, uh, because they, they go so quickly once we come into waking consciousness, but I think there's much to be learned. I remember when I did write some down, I've now referred or found those notes. And I went, oh, I understand. I understand a little bit. That must be this. And and in a way, it's, it's you being able to tap into your higher self. And all of us do dream. I think it's very comforting that she states um, that we do dream, even if we don't remember it, and that it is up to your own interpretation. This is your own space of wisdom that we all have access to everything sleeps all everything is cyclical and the book that kathy is speaking about again is because for the children who ask why there is a free copy down below um, kathy has been coming on and sharing her wisdom with us uh, as well through aunt eleanor's words and this is a book that was written uh, anonymously although we think we know who wrote it but there is no author but these are these timeless teachings that you can share with your children uh, with your pupils if you wish by downloading this book it's free there's no catch you can play back kathy's videos here on the living theosophy channel and share them with those that you love because uh, you can learn empathy i mean you can learn about compassion and understanding in the bigger picture of life so um thank you so much sweet kathy for that and sweet dreams to one and all is there anything you'd like to add <laughs> just pleasant dreams to one and all and i'll say you know when you're saying higher self the higher self perceives so much that is what El Aunt Eleanor is called, calling that perceiver and that thinker. So is that she? is, the, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's the deepest part of us, the truest sense of who and what we are. It's our consciousness. Yeah. And everybody has this. It's not, it's not, no one is left out. This is, everybody has this. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to sign up for anything. You don't have to pay any money. It's there inside of you. That guide is inside of you. And a lot of people dismiss their dreams as simply imagination uh, or, or just the carrying away of the mind. But there's much there. It's literally a, a fountain, a vault of information for you. So um, yeah, definitely take a look and pay heed. And I do believe what Kathy said about this local, the dream journals that they have now, the dream definitions, look them up. If you want to get guidance, you don't need to go to a tarot reader or, or anything like that. You can actually go within because that's where all the answers are. Thank you so much, Kathy. It's lovely Thank having you. you. Thank you. We'll see you again. Yeah, there you are. The end of the video right here backstage at Living Theosophy. <laughs> if you would, please click like, subscribe and share. You can click the bell notification so you know when we go live and new videos are coming out. There's so much happening here, but we need to get out into the world because this is ancient teachings for a modern world. So your help is appreciated. Thank you so much.